Do you need a really good laugh today? Well, stay tuned because I've got a really good story for you. <laughs> Hi there, sweet mommy. This is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com. And today I want to bring you some encouragement and some delight for your day. So go ahead and grab some coffee or sit down and nurse the baby or wash the dishes. And um, you can listen to this po as a podcast or you can watch it. And I hope this brings a lot of fun in your life. So, what happened to me? Well, I am an older woman and I wear shapewear. Yes, I admit it. That is my secret. <laughs> it makes me feel more put together. And one night I was pulling off my shapewear and I was pulling it, crossing my arms and pulling it over my head. And I felt this twinge in my shoulder, but I thought, oh, no big deal. I was in the army, you know, we power through pain, you know, and I have 15 children, so I know how to power through pain, right? And I went to bed and it just like hurt. So, I mean, I, I went to sleep, but then I woke up in the wee hours of the morning and it was just so painful. And I thought, what's going on? I couldn't go back to sleep. Well, that ended up in an urgent care uh, visit. And so I went in there and they said, so, um, ma'am, uh, you, so you're having shoulder pain. Can you explain to this, to the injury that, can you explain to us the accident that happened that caused the pain to your shoulder? And I had to say, yeah, I was pulling off my shapewear. <laughs> and I could tell the, the urgent care PA that I talked to. I could tell that he was really trying to look extra serious because he wanted to laugh really hard because he didn't know what shapewear was. He goes, so what's shapewear? <laughs> and I had it. He said, well, basically a girdle. <laughs> he goes, oh. <laughs> and I think he was trying to, like, and then he <clears throat> had to quiet himself because he wanted to laugh really hard. And so that was one urgent care um, thing and then it got progressively worse and worse and then i ended up in the er the next morning and of course i had to repeat the shapewear thing to all kinds of people and i know they were all trying to stifle a laugh and and one one of the hospital workers came in and she goes you know you can get hurt with the simplest thing i was just bending over to feed my dog and you know i hurt my back really hard so they were all like you know it was one of those kind of injuries that you know, like, oh yeah, my I had to have surgery because I pulled off my shapewear wrong. <laughs> so yeah, so I am in a sling. So things have been weird this last week. It's been a weird month, weird couple of months. So um, yeah, so I'm in this sling and um, I'm slowly able to do a lot of things. I'm hoping it's just a strain and not like a rotator cuff tear <laughs> from shapewear. I know. Well, I could tell you another one if you really want another laugh. So... Uh, you know, we're older, and so we use things like Bengay on our, you know, for our aches and pains. And so um, we have this medicine cabinet, and on one side we have the toothpaste. You can tell where this is going, right? And on the other side is where we keep the tube of Bengay. Well, for some reason, I went in to brush my teeth one night, and I pulled the tube, and I put it on my toothbrush, and I put it in my mouth. I'm going, this is not foaming, and it doesn't taste right. But it was like... You know, it was, I did have like the pepper menthol feeling. It was, just, you know, it was zesty. <laughs> and I realized, oh my goodness, I'm brushing my teeth with Bengay. <laughs> so I had to take my brush and had to wash it out really good. And yeah, and then I had to yeah brush my teeth. But anyway, I thought those, you know, you could laugh at my expense. And that would <laughs> get us started today because we've been talking about joy. We've been talking about how God promised moms they can have joy. But there are things that want to steal our joy. And one of those things we're going to talk about today is fear and worry. So let me read from my book. Um, we have been... Oh, by the way, <laughs> my, I've been having help with my hair because I can't really do it properly. So <laughs> that's another thing I laugh at when I look at myself. Anyway, so this is the book we're going to be reading from. It is a glorious mothering that I wrote a few years ago and you can get this on Amazon. You don't have to get it. I will read it to you and there's actually a blog post that I'm reading from uh, um, and it's how five things that still motherly joy and how you can overcome or something like that. So that's the blog post that's dealing with the chapter that we're on right now and I will read to you and I've got all kinds of fun things to add. 
So, and if you stay tuned to the end, I actually have something I want to give to you as a Christmas present. So stay tuned, there's something fun coming. All right, <clears throat> now, as we're reading, God wants to give moms joy. He promises moms that we will be joyful mothers, okay? And so now we're going to learn about the first thing that steals motherly joy, and that is fear and worry. Now, first off, I know that being careful means you are being caring, you're full of care for someone. And if you're a mom of little children and you're not full of care for them, then you're not being a good mom. Isn't that the truth? I mean, we do have to be considerate when they're like, they're, they're, like they look flushed, like they have a fever, or they're not, they're kind of languid. You know, we need to be alert to these things. We need to be taking care of our children. We need to make sure they have the right nutrition, the right education. These are important. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that you're doing something bad if you're taking care of someone and you're careful to notice the things that they need and do them for them. Okay, that's not the bad kind, okay? The bad kind is this, okay? So now I'll read it verbatim, okay? Now a parent who is not concerned about his or her children is not worthy to be called human. A certain amount of care and worry is not only warranted, but required. This is why I nag my children to brush their teeth and do their schoolwork, right? However, there is also a care that is based in fear which stems from a lack of understanding of who God is. If God is in heaven, ready to bring the hammer down at any time, you know, with that bolt of lightning is going to strike you, then we must cringe in fear and try to keep evil things from happening as much as possible. Now, when I'm talking about this, this thing, um, when I was a little girl, one of my relatives told me when I did something naughty that God was going to send a big person to beat me up. Okay, and that I was I was always scared when I walked home from school because I was waiting for that big person to beat me up. Or that when I was swimming in our swimming pool, which we had a, 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 a we, I lived in a trailer court and we had a swimming pool. This is when this is a nice one, okay? And um, so she said when I was in my swimming pool that God was gonna send a shark to eat me. Yes. So I had this idea of this God in heaven who was constantly watching and making sure I did things right. And if I didn't, then he was going to great, bring great catastrophe. And so I thought that that was the God that was going to bring the hammer down at any time. Now, you know our God is a God of justice. And because he is just and righteousness, he can't fool around with, with injustice and sin and transgressions. He can't fool around with that. But he made a way by giving his own self to pay for that. So he's a God of mercy and kindness. And so anyway, but I didn't realize that when I was a little girl. And so I kind of thought that God was like that. And I think back in the back of our minds, we still have that tendency to think that way. You know, that's how Adam and Eve, that's what showed that they had sinned, right? So they're in the garden, they're in the, this idyllic place. God walks with them in the cool of the evening. Every afternoon, they get to walk with God and just talk with Him. And then, so then they, they don't even know that they're naked, right? So once they transgressed and ate from the tree of good and evil, what happened? All of a sudden, now they're aware that God would be mad at them. So you see, it's in our sin nature. It's in who we are without Christ before we're born again. Our, our mind tends this way, that we think that God's constantly mad at us. And that's where a lot of our... Uh, fears and anxieties come from. Okay, um, <clears throat> if you if you want to know, fear, worry, and distrust actually displease God. Okay, so think about the Israelites in the desert as an illustration of this that God's given us in His Word. And you know, the Old Testament is is in there, and it it's very instructive. It's like we are Israel. We're walking through this wilderness of this world, and God is trying to teach us the things that He was trying to teach Israel at that time. Right, so. If you think about it, they would go through, um, they would be going through the wilderness and they would all be thirsty. And they would say, God, what? You know, they would, they would complain to Moses. <laughs> they would say, Moses, why don't you bring us out here in the desert just to die of thirst? We don't have any food to eat. And we're just, and you know, and where is this God you were talking about? You know, let's just make us a golden calf because we can't see this God. And he he's mean anyway. He wants to sit down. You know, we have no leeks or no onions by the Nile. And no, you know what I'm saying? And so it's the grumbling and the complaining just drove God, ang he was angry. He was angry. He wanted to get rid of all of them and start over with Moses. <laughs> 
So when we, but, but did he come through for them? Absolutely. He gave them water from a rock. Did you know what it says in the scripture that he didn't only want to give them water from the rock. He wanted to give them honey from the rock. You can look it up. God didn't just, God doesn't just want to give us subsistence so we're barely making it. God wants to bless us above and beyond what we can ask or think. He wanted to give them honey if they had trusted him and believed him. Instead of just water, they could have had honey from the rock. Ah, that's, I mean, it's, it's an indictment on our own, on our own faith, isn't it? How do you overcome this? How do we overcome our natural tendency to, do, to believe the worst in our Father God? Well, uh, we have to have faith. I know. Faith, okay. Uh, fear and anxiety are not God's plan for us. God is not that mean guy with the thunderbolt, okay? God is a God of mercy. You know what it says in uh, 2 Corinthians? That God is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. That's right. He is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. God wants us to have joy. He wants us to be in comfort. He wants us to rest. Okay, he wants security for us. Now, in Isaiah 30, 15, let me read this scripture to you real quick. In Isaiah 30, 15, we read this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got to find it again. <laughs> I have one arm. Okay, so in Isaiah 30, 15, we read this. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. You see, we need to have confidence in God. And we need to believe Him. And we need to have quietness and confidence in God. And we need to believe for the person He really is. He is that God of mercy and that God that comforts us. Okay, so let me tell you the three areas that, real, that God really needs us to believe in. And they are, He wants us to believe that He is powerful enough to do anything He needs to do. I mean, he is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's he's everything we need. Okay, that's the first thing we need to believe, right? Because if you got this little wimpy idol God, you know, the, God talked about the idols. The idols couldn't talk. They couldn't walk. They couldn't do anything, right? And people would give their own children to them. But if we believe that we serve a God of power and knowledge and ability, that's the first rung. Okay, the second rung is that he is benevolent and only wants our good. You know, we, we get so disappointed. We've been disappointed by parents. We've been disappointed by authorities. We've been disappointed by life experiences. And we figure, well, God's just one more thing that's going to let us down. And I mean, we might even like go to church and, and homeschool and, and, you know, trust God for this and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to live righteous lives. But in the back of our minds still, we got that, got that doubt that God wants it good for us. You know, we just got to suffer, you know, but that's not who God is. Now, it doesn't mean that, that bad things won't happen to us in this broken world. But it does mean that God's always going to work them out for our good if we are those who are called for, by Him and we love Him. Right? That's Romans 8.28. Everything in your life is going to work for your good. What is your, your ultimate good? To walk so close with God that you'll be like Enoch. Right? And you walk so close with Him that you just will be taken up. <laughs> so... God's always going to work things for you. Always, 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 always. You have to believe that 100% or it won't work. The third rung is that he hears us when we cry out to him. Do you believe that God hears you when you cry to him? Or do you figure I just pray and it kind of clunks? You know, there are prayers, okay? I, I got to tell you this. There are two prayers that I'd like to point out that we tend to pray. One prayer is the prayer that is out here. The other prayer is the prayer that's in here, Right? So we get together in a group and we pray. And we go, oh, God bless uh, God bless Pastor so-and-so, God bless this, God do this, God save America, whatever. That's, that's a nice prayer. It's out there. It's a good prayer. It's like we're talking, right? We just kind of talk it out like we could read it. Didn't have to mean anything. And then there are the prayers that are in here. Oh, sorry. And then there are the prayers that are in here. And those kind of prayers are different. Those kind of prayers are we are in an intimate relationship with God and we are speaking to Him as His dear child. And He is our dear Father. 
and we're sitting on his knee and we're gazing in his face and we're desperate and we're saying oh god please please help me that's a supplication isn't it you know philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 really is an outline for this it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god and the peace of god which passes your understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus now when we think about this when we are by prayer in everything every every problem you face by prayer and supplication i was talking about that supplication prayer it's like you're sitting on God's lap. And I'm not, listen, I'm not, being, I'm not being disrespectful to God. I don't plan that I should ever assume that I could just sit on God's lap. But you know what? He says I can bold, come boldly into his throne room because of Jesus. So I'm going to come boldly in there and I'm going to bow before him. And I'm going to say, God, with all my heart, I am so desperate for your help. Have you ever been there? Have you, I've been there recently. Have you? God, I just need your help. So I'm just asking you, as your dear child, could you help me today? I don't know how I'm going to be able to homeschool these kids today. God, we don't have very much money and the bills are coming and I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know how, God. I've got a teenager and God, I don't know how to communicate. I'm messing up, Lord. I have I don't have the patience. I don't know how to love this difficult person in my life. God, I'm desperate. I'm desperate and I'm crying out to you. And this is this is where the prayer turns, okay? This is where the faith is expressed. Now, so far, so good, right? You've let God know that you had need, but if you stop there, it's going it can turn into a whining session. God, you know how sad I've been and everything's been bad for me, and I'm just and then when he said that, and then she said that, and it was just so hard. And it's okay. God can handle that. But if you stop there, then you are not going to please God with your prayer. Do you know why? Because you're not going to pray in faith. Because faith pleases God. So, what do we have to do? We have to go. But God, I talked about the three rungs, remember? But my Father in heaven, I know, number one, that you can do anything. Number two, I know that you want my good. Number three, I know that you hear me when I cry out to you. Ah, one, two, three, the three rungs, remember? So what does it say in... Um, that, that passage in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, with thankfulness. Okay, so now what do I do? I say, I can thank him for two things. The first thing I can thank him for is I can remember all the times that he has answered my prayers. I can say, God, I remember when you did this for me. Thank you so much. And I remember when you did this for me. Thank you so much. And I remember when you did this for me. Thank you so much. And you know what? I know that you hear my cry and I know that I can thank you for answering this prayer too. Right? So we thank him for answering this supplication, this desperate plea when we cry out to God, thank you God for the answer to my problem. And you know what God? I believe that I'm going to see that answer very soon because I know that you love me and you're my sweet daddy my sweet father, my creator, and I know that when I cry out to you, you love me more than any father on earth could ever love his child. And I know that you will make it good for me. And when we pray like that, you know what? We're going to see results. Yes. Maybe the results are not exactly what you thought they should be. Because remember, it says, if we delight ourselves in him, then he will give us the desires of our heart. Because sometimes the things our head says we need are different from what our heart actually needs. So when God is going to answer your prayer, you may say, God, release me from this horrible, awful person I have to deal with. But maybe what God's going to do, he's going to transform your heart and your mind so that you can love that person and have joy in that person 
beyond your own capabilities. And that will be his answer. So he will still answer your prayer, but it will even be better than what you asked for. <laughs> so I hope this has blessed you today. And I hope that it gives you some encouragement during this time. Some of us are going through a really hard time at Christmas time. I can remember when I had a whole bunch of little kids, Christmas time was not fun for me. I, I loved my little kids and I loved everything, but there's just so much hype around Christmas and it would be so much work that I didn't allow myself to enjoy it as much as I should. I probably piled a lot of the hype on myself as I look back and I didn't have to. I could have kept it more simple. And I hope you can too. So what is my treat? What is my Christmas present? Let me show you. <coughs> so in this notebook, this notebook, do you see this? I don't know if you can see that. I have been working on a lot of illustrations and they're instructive illustrations and they're fun illustrations. And um, they are um, stuff I'm doing to make a home book for my own girls. And eventually I hope to be able to share it with you. Um, uh, and Here's one of the illustrations that I've been working on. And um, one thing I did is for Christmas. So I thought that I could give it as a PDF download on my website. That's momdelights.com on my blog. And I thought you could print it out. And what it is, is it's a story. It's a story that I haven't been able to find printed. But it is uh, by Henry Van Dyke. And it's called The First Christmas Tree. And it traces, well, it's kind of a conjecture. I mean, it could have been like this, but a lot of people have, have believed that the first Christmas tree was actually when St. Boniface uh, cut down the huge oak tree that they worshipped in Germany. And I guess you'll have to read to find out more, but it's really well written. And it's a little long, but I think that um, it would be something fun to read at Christmas. And it's very, very Christian in origin. And so what I will do is I will have this as a download on my blog post for this video. So if you go, go to the links, either in the description or what have you, then you'll be able to go there and you'll be able to download this. You can print it out. You can read it right there, I guess, on the PDF. But you could download it and you can share it with your family this Christmas. And this is my Christmas card to you. Thank you so much for listening and for watching and all the support. You know, some people have actually given to me financially this year. And it was such a blessing, such a treat for me. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I pray that you have a wonderful Christmas time this season. And I hope to have another video out soon. But if I don't, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye-bye.